change is really the driving force of life. The first thing about handling change is to accept that it's inevitable, but it's exciting. And my advice would be to embrace change. In 1994, I was offered the opportunity to join the Independent Electoral Commission for the first democratic election. Judge Crickler, who offered me the job and gave me about three minutes to decide, told me we had only four months to deliver the election instead of one year. The country was tense, there was violence, we didn't have modern communication technology, but he referred to this as an insurmountable opportunity. When, after four months, the elections had gone off peacefully and calm and dignity and respect had returned to the country, he confessed to a group of business people. Maybe we were too stupid to realize this was impossible. Those words continue to inspire me every day. Change is vital in my industry, which is every facet of communication. Because it's through communication, sharing facts, information, insights and understanding, that we really are the agents of change, telling people what is happening, when, where, how, why and what. I believe that all of us have a duty to learn more and to gain a greater understanding of why we are on this earth and why we are amongst people so that we can coexist along our natural and given world. And I'm not talking about university, I'm talking about the school of life. Because if we don't do that, we really are not progressing and we are not helping to make the world a better place. Leading by example, getting business and government to have the right policies to sustain resilience into the future and implementing those as part of normal business processes. We have to find the few bold things to do and have the courage to do that will make the most difference in making this a better world. Educate, educate, educate. Sometimes understanding more about the things that happen to you will actually help you and make you grow. We all have adversity in our life. It's about how we deal with it. I nearly drowned twice as a young child. I was so scared of swimming that I would hold on to the side of the swimming pool when we got over the deep diving pool of five meters. I was the laughing stock of my class. And I went on to become a swimmer and a lifesaver and an underwater hockey player and ultimately a scuba diving instructor. So the thing about overcoming adversity is don't carry the burden alone. Fear can be a huge stumbling block, but if your fear continues to nag you and it impedes your progress, your growth, and your ability to lead a full and purposeful life, you have to deal with it. It's worth gold to have a conversation with a mentor and actually unpack what is happening to you. I've had two near-death experiences and that gives you a real appreciation of you don't have that much time. To those who have stared death in the face, life has a sweetness the timid will never know. Everyone has their own very unique recipe for success and it can be measured in all kinds of ways. For me, it is about having and rediscovering your purpose. Why do you do what you do? It is about staying in touch, informed, technologically current, and to understand you don't have to know how electricity works if you can find the light switch. So keep on learning, keep on networking, talk to people from all walks of life, younger, older, wiser than you are, and continue to be current in your interests. Leadership for me is about serving, sharing, and caring, not about position, power, and money.